Hey everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the extraordinary honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist, band leader, bass synth player, and very, very busy studio touring bassist, Leanne Bowes. Yay! Hi. <laughs> Great intro. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Starting from the beginning, we always like to go back to the past. How did you get started in music, and particularly on bass? So, so growing up, my dad was a musician. He was primarily a drummer. So... I grew up around, you know, him playing drums, but he also played everything else. He had guitars laying around and basses laying around. So that was really my introduction. We were, I must have been 12, living in Connecticut with my family at the time. And my dad wanted to try MIDI recording. So he like got this new MIDI setup and he got these electronic drums and he was like, oh, I'd love to have you record at the same time if you don't mind just learning a bass line real quick. And I was like, okay, like I've never played bass before. And I played like clarinet in school and sang and, you know, just those kind of things. But I, I love music. I was drawn to it, obviously. So yeah, I learned So Lonely by the Police with my dad. We just like played it into the MIDI recording and I loved it. I was like, this is so fun. So I just kept learning all the songs. I learned the rest of that album. I learned like all the CDs in my house. It was like, you know, I was, I was obsessed with learning everything. And so, yeah, I mean, that was, that was my introduction to bass was literally just my dad being like, let's just try this. Here's, here's my bass, try it. And from there, I mean, in high school and, and middle school, I was in bands just locally in my town and just having fun with it through college. I studied marketing in college. I went to school for advertising and still just was doing it on the side for fun. And then my dad actually got sick and passed away in 2011. And I was, you know, it was heartbreaking and seeing him not be able to really do music professionally. He was just in it as a hobbyist like I was doing. But see, you know, there's the silver lining of seeing someone pass away where it's like, life is really short. You, you get this, you know, smack in the face of like, okay, this is one life we've got. So at that point, I just decided to go full steam ahead with music and like set my sights on being a hired gun musician, joined bands, joined, started touring, really slowly climbed the ladder to where I am today. I mean, that's that's it. It was just, I never I never studied music professionally. When I picked up the bass, I was not like, this is going to be my career. It was mm -hmm. really just like, this is fun, this is cool. You know, it was never my thought that I'd be where I am today. So. Yeah, that's that's kind of the the long story short of it. Got gotcha. you. So, and then you're very much self-taught. Yes, that's right. Nice, nice. Yeah. Your choices and your the directions you've taken have led you to be on stage with the likes of you know Demi Lovato, Derek Day, Mariah, and countless others. So, what you're doing is is working. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you draw your inspiration from? Again, you, you'd mentioned starting like with Sting, but I mean, hey, well, where yeah. do you, how do you come up with your licks and, and all that? Yeah, well, I'll actually, I mean, I'll say two things about inspiration. There's, you know, the career path of it is something that back in, you know, I think it must have been, I, I joined my first like professionally touring band in 2013. That was Hunter Valentine. We toured all over the world, incredible opportunities. At that time, I was like, how can I spin this into playing for huge artists? How can I spin this into like getting those huge gigs? And in order to learn how to do that, I took to Instagram and I looked at people like Nita Strauss. I mm -hmm. looked at people that were doing this. And, you know, this is something, Nita's a great example. There were a few women I was kind of like, you know, watching at that time of like, how are they parlaying this? Like Eva Gardner's another good example with Pink, like just someone that's like, just doing this as their career. I didn't, I didn't know how. There's obviously no guidebook. Anyone watching this knows there's no guidebook, which is very frustrating sometimes because you don't have like, you know, instructions. Yeah. But Nita's a great example and, and goes for full circle because I was able to tour with her this year. But at that time, I'm in, in my bedroom in Brooklyn in 2013 looking through her Instagram and just like she was inspiring in the sense of like, I can just look at this and see what is she posting? What is she doing? What is what is her brand? You know, Anita's also a great example of a brand. I mean, she's got a really great marketing sense. So mm -hmm. I want to say people like Nita and Eva Gardner were my inspirations back back then from a career perspective, back mm -hmm. when I decided to start touring. But I will say, from like a music perspective, my, my favorite inspiration I like to, to talk about is one of my band, Hunter Valentine's first big tours, like I'm saying back in 2013, was opening for Sum 41. And that was my first, like, I was like, I hadn't seen a show like that really. I mean, I saw when I was younger, I saw like Good Charlotte and shows like that, but I was like up close and personal with this band, watching them every night. 
And Cone, their bass player, was just like his stage presence, his tone, everything about him, I was just soaking it in. I was just like learning from that. And I always like to say, I mean, he's my number one inspiration. My moves on stage, I like like to think about what Cone would do. I mean, <laughs> he's just he was just that first introduction for me of like this is how you this is how you run the room. This is how you like you know, just like that confidence is so yes. inspiring to me. So yeah, Co- Cohen musically is one of my biggest inspirations, and then people like Nita, I would say, in my earlier career, and it's a, like, again, it's full circle and wild that now Nita and I just toured as peers on a tour. I mean, I, I did get where I'm trying to go, so yeah. it's pretty amazing. But yeah, watching others do it back in the beginning was how I figured it out. Very nice, very nice. And as you mentioned, yeah, sound, how are you getting your sound? What gear are you playing on? Well, my favorite thing is tone i love talking about tone Mm. (laughs) it used to i think part of why i love talking about it is i used to really have no clue about tone i used to just get to a space plug in an amp hope for the best that was never something i thought about but as you start to do pop gigs you need to show up with the tone. This is like a huge thing, especially now I'm a musical director too. I expect musicians to show up having heard the tone and replicate the tone. That's a big part of the gig. If you show up to, you know, I don't know, uh, if you show up to a pop gig and you have a gritty tone or vice versa, you show up to a rock gig and you have a clean tone, it's just like, it's just not going to sound exactly right. And you're going to have to take that time out of rehearsals to like nail the tone. So anyway, I use the Line 6 HX Stomp for my bass and that is a digital pedal with amp modelers. So I was, I love amps, but I was sort of forced in through the pop world of not having amps on stage, kind of forced into that. But I will say it's incredible the Line 6 HX Stomp is like, the amp modelers on that, I get compliments from all over the world about my tone. You know, I'll, if something like, especially when I was on something like Jimmy Fallon with Demi, I was getting messages from people just like, how did you get that tone? And so it's amazing. And, and, you know, it takes a little bit of homework. It takes some learning to like figure out the tool and, and figure it out. But once you do, I mean, you are able to do anything with it. And that's the thing that's like incredible too about these pop gigs. You show up and it's like, I was noticing this back before I got this pedal. I'd show up to a gig and they'd be like, oh, we really want like a fuzz right here. Or, oh, we want a chorus right here, chorus tone. And it's like, I have to buy all these pedals. Like I don't own every single type of pedal. So when you're switching gigs a lot and you're trying to build your resume and get a lot of you know different artists, you need every kind of pedal. So that's what the, the Line 6 HX Stop or similar models do is like, you have everything there. You just have to program it. So. Yes, that is a huge part of my tone now. If, if you know, if you hear anything I'm playing in the last year, it's going to be on that HX stomp. A Fender P bass is, is my favorite tone. That's the bass I like to use most. And then Ernie Ball, Super Slinky Strings. Those are the three things I would say that really make my tone. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. It is so impressive, again, with the kind of music you do have to make your tone fit that perfectly because we have so many varieties in music that as you've mentioned if you showed up with let's say dead strings like you'd coming from playing reggae and then yeah. now you're trying to get into the brighter range of things i mean it's just not going to work and it's yes countless considerations that have to be taken into you know account to go okay how is this going to work and especially again with with pop music i think some groups maybe it's it's lucky for them when they they're kind of able to not have to worry about a lot of the variety yes. <laughs> that they yes. go like you know it's bluegrass you go you sound this way there's no song that you need to sound any different it was just <laughs> yeah. here, definitely here we go and then there we go yeah. but wow and in this big i'm going to say hurricane of activity because like many i'm sure you were probably a little sidelined by the pandemic as so many musicians couldn't tour anymore and then again just seeing what you were doing in 2022 you really came out of the gate what are your plans for the future what's in the works Right now, we've got more gigs booked with Demi, so we've got a couple more through the year. So Demi Lovato is my primary gig at this point, and I am the musical director and bass player on that project. Mm-hmm. So, you know, doing a lot behind the scenes, setting up the show and things like that. So that's that's exciting. We've got a couple more there. I 
Uh, I musical direct also for Royal and the Serpent now. Royal and the Serpent is currently on tour with Fall Out Boy. She's opening. So that's been taking up some time too, is just getting her show set up. I'm not playing with her. I'm just setting up the show and sending them off. And yeah, I mean, from here, there's there's a few more sort of tours in the works that you might see me, you know, announcing in the next couple of months. But that is sort of towards the end of the year. And from here, I mean, my, my plan kind of moving forward, it's musical directing is, is something I really like. It is something that plays on my strengths. I think if you're in bands for, you know, more than half of your life, like I have been, you just have a natural understanding of how rehearsals should run and how set lists should be and so that part is kind of taken care of as like a musical director like you just understand and Mm -hmm. hiring musicians you know who's going to work you know who's going to fit in socially you know like those things are really important and so then there's just the technology piece of musical directing where you're putting the show together and i've been doing my homework on that and so um yeah it's something i really like and want to be focusing on more so i'm excited to move forward with that and kind of work with different artists gotcha gotcha yeah. Well, it's very exciting. If people want to know where to look to see what you're doing, where should they go? Uh, my Instagram is the best place to go. My handle there is Leanne Bose Base. That's the easiest way to find me. Very cool. Well, Leanne, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with us. Folks, make sure you check out everything that Leanne's doing because most assuredly she's going to be on your radar, on your screen <laughs> when you least expect it. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be there. Folks, you've seen her here, Leanne Bose on Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks.